into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We certainly like to welcome all of you that uh, braved the weather this morning. We uh, actually, actually have a good crowd out this morning, and uh, we're excited to have you here today. Uh, also, for all of our friends that may be worshiping with us uh, via uh, live stream, we're excited to have you uh, being a part of our worship experience today. Um, we are certainly looking forward to a, a great day of fellowship. Uh, if you are out and about uh, slipping and sliding around, maybe running from the grocery store, the laundromat, and you have not made a decision as yet to where you would like to worship, we would cordially invite you to come out and fellowship with us here at St. John's East United Church of Christ. We are located at 7000 Lincoln Avenue. We are directly across the street from Plaza Park School. Uh, the main roads are in good shape, so if you can get out of your driveway or off a side street, you can make it to church today. One thing we uh, always remind ourselves each and every Sunday uh, without any sense of contradiction, and that is God is good and all the time. Amen. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you, we praise you, we love you for this another expression of your love, your grace, and your mercy. For you giving us a, a mind, a mindset, an attitude, a motivation to uh, come out and worship you in spirit and in truth. God, as we take a retrospective look back over the past week, one thing we can certainly say, you've been with us every step of the way. Sometimes, God, our paths have been uh, difficult. Sometimes we've had struggles and challenges. At the same time, God, we have um, seen positive aspects in our lives. We've seen uh, victories and we've seen improvements in health and employment and various situations. And yes, God, we understand what the weatherman says and what he predicts, but we understand that you control the weather. And so God, even when it's a little brisk outside, we still uh, have a mindset to come together and fellowship and to praise and worship you with like-minded believers. God, we uh, pray for those that uh, had a desire to be here today but could not make it. Um, for all of our sick and shut in, God, we ask a special blessing on them. Thank you for not only the members of St. John's that are here today, but also for friends and guests and visitors. God, you're, uh, you are welcome in this place. We realize, God, that uh, without you, we can do nothing, but your word tells us that with you, we can do all things. We continue, God, to give your name praise, honor, and glory, for you are worthy. Please, God, forgive us of our sins and bless us by your Holy Spirit. It is in Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Um, Gwen Lewis is a little under the weather today, and so um, one of our uh, relatively new members and newly appointed uh, elders, Deborah Wilson, uh, will bring our call to worship today. Thank you. <laughs> I'm loud anyway, so I didn't know. <laughs> God who is one, you call us to be one. May we be one with all who are made in your image. God who is three, you called us to the community. We unite with God, sons and daughters from every creed and culture. Um, also, as many of you know, uh, the month of February is uh, African American Black History Month. Uh, as we did uh, last February, um, each service, uh, we will have uh, either a member or a friend uh, come up and uh, give us our Black History highlight today. Uh, Sister Claudia Matthews. <laughs> Good morning. Okay, this is Black History Month Facts, 10 Things You Should Know by Fox News staff. Every February, the nation celebrates Black History Month by honoring the contributions that African Americans have made throughout history, while also recognizing that the fight for racial justice continues to this day. This year's theme for Black History Month is Black Health and Wellness as outlined by the Association for the Study of African American Life and History, headquartered in Washington, D.C. Health isn't just going to see the doctor, but also the spiritual, mental, emotional, and financial aspects of good health. Here are 10 key points about Black History Month in this country. Number one, the current population of black and African Americans is almost 48 million according to the U.S. Census Bureau. The Census Bureau also reports that 89.4% of African Americans aged 25 or older had a high school diploma or higher in the year 2020. Two, founder of the Association for the Study of Negro, now changed to African American Life and History Organization, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, was the first to have the idea of Negro History Week. Woodson worried that black children were not being taught about their ancestors' achievements in American schools in the early 1900s. Woodson was born in 1875 to newly freed Virginia slaves. He later earned a PhD in history from Harvard University. Three. By the late 1960s, Negro History Week, precursor for this month's celebration and events, changed into what is now known as Black History Month. The month of February was chosen by Woodson for Black History Month because it contained the birthdays of both President Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. Lincoln was born on February 12th, and Douglass, a former slave who did not know his precise birthday, celebrated his date of birth on February 14th. Five, the Association for the Study of African American Life and History has celebrated Negro History Week and Black History Month for 95 years. Six, 50 years after the first celebrations, then President Gerald R. Ford officially recognized Black History Month at the country's 1976 bicentennial. Ford called on America to seize the opportunity to honor the often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Seven, 40 years after Ford's recognition of Black History Month, then President Barack Obama delivered this message in part from the White House. Black History Month shouldn't be treated as though it is somehow separate from our collective American history are somehow just boiled down to a compilation of greatest hits from the March on Washington or from some of our sports heroes. It's about the lives 
experience of all African Americans. Eight, Canada started commemorating Black History Month in February 1995, the United Kingdom in 1987, and the Republic of Ireland in 2010. Nine, at the time of Black History Week's launch in 1926, Wilson believed the teaching of black history was key to the physical and intellectual survival of the race within society. Wilson said, if a race has no history, it has no worthwhile tradition. It becomes an insignificant factor in the thought of the world and it stands in danger of being exterminated. 10. This year's theme for Black History Month is Black Health and Wellness. Past themes have included the family, black migrations, and black women in American culture and history, among others. Dr. Carter G. Wilson is known as the father of black history. Thank you, Brother Henry, and uh, thank you, Claudia, for our Black History Highlight uh, for this Sunday. Um, just a few announcements, and um, we will also acknowledge our prayer requests and praise reports. Um, our Bible study continues each and every Wednesday, um, live here in the Fellowship Hall at 12 noon, and then 6 p.m. via Zoom. We are continuing our study in the Book of Psalms. Um, one of our favorite psalms will be um, addressed uh, this Wednesday, uh, Psalms 23, uh, a psalm of comfort. Uh, we had 20 at uh, Bible study at 12 noon last week. A uh, lot of energy, a lot of interaction, a uh, lot of good questions. Um, and so it's, uh, it's a good time of fellowship as well as a good time to uh, learn more 
about your relationship uh, with the Lord through his word. And again, we also thank those that continue uh, their commitment 6 p.m. via Zoom. Um, just a reminder for the month uh, of February, and I certainly, uh, even though she's out of town today, I want to thank uh, Ginger for this suggestion or recommendation. We will actually be doing uh, a month-long series uh, in the month of February uh, entitled uh, God Calls Us. Uh, that's what we'll be talking about each and every Sunday. Today, as you probably already noticed in your bulletin, uh, God calls us to unity. Um, the second Sunday of February, God calls us to love. The third Sunday, we will talk about God calls us to redemption. And then the last, fourth Sunday of February, we will talk about God calls us to his will, to his way, and to his word. So that'll be our theme for the entire month of February. Uh, certainly looking forward uh, to sharing details. Um, also, we've already mentioned about our Black uh, History readings each and every Sunday during service. Uh, the last Sunday of February, we will have a special treat. It's actually Claudia's sister, Sandra Matthews, will be with us in House Hall uh, Sunday morning at 9.30. Doors will open early at 9.15. Of course, we'll have coffee and snacks. Um, sister Sandra Matthews, who is the founder and editor of Our Times newspaper, the only black pub publication here in Evansville. Um, and she is also the founder of the Evansville African American Museum. And so she'll be here uh, sharing not only some national uh, black history activities or events, uh, but local right here in Evansville as well. Uh, we're looking forward to that fellowship. Uh, prayer requests and praise reports, um, quite lengthy prayer list today. A lot of people uh, ill, sick, so we're certainly praying. Um, Gwen Lewis uh, is out today. Kathy Lowen, who I did receive a text from this morning, is rehabbing at home and, and improving. Uh, Vicki Hart uh, is also out of Encompass. Uh, spoke with her yesterday. She is at home. My sister, Reverend Julia Scott, who is rehabbing, Vanessa Brown, Vita Crow, Audrey Kane, Deacon Tim Parker. Um, one of our new members that uh, was to be recognized today, Mary Jane and her husband, Richard. Mary Jane is under the weather today, so they won't, won't be with us, so praying for them. Uh, Sam Mormon, Christy Mormon, and a special prayer for Christy's daughter, uh, Mallory. They, uh, are on their way this weekend to the Cleveland, Ohio clinic uh, for her daughter uh, to get some tests ran. Uh, so we're certainly uh, praying that everything goes well for uh, them. Uh, our secretary, Linda Carter, who again has outdone herself with a wonderful um, bulletin cover. If you look closely, those are pictures of individuals and family, and you can see how Linda put that together with the picture of Jesus Christ. Uh, she texted me yesterday, her husband Doug uh, fell um, and had a minor fracture, but he's, he's doing fine. We'll spend one night in the hospital, should go home tomorrow. So we're praying for Doug for healing. And then a, um, a special prayer of thanksgiving for the New Hope Baptist Church family uh, as they welcome their new pastor uh, today, the Reverend Ryan Jackson. And so we are certainly praying for them um, as they uh, move forward with new leadership. Um, also, um, I was trying to think, uh, oh, uh, Ashlyn Scarborough, we're keeping her on our prayer list as well. Any other prayer requests or praise reports that anyone would like to share this morning? Anyone have anything? Okay. If not, uh, let's pray. God, we, uh, we thank you for, uh, first of all, just being here for an opportunity to worship with like-minded believers. Even God, in inclement weather, you've allowed us to uh, wrap up and uh, make it to the house of prayer. We lift up those, God, that had a mind to be here, could not make it. And everyone on this list, God, we ask a special prayer for blessings, healing, rehabilitation, restoration, uh, because we realize, God, we are thankful, we're grateful, and we're appreciative for doctors and nurses and medicine and technology, but we realize, God, ultimately, it is you that is our healer. 
So right now, in the name of Jesus, and certainly in the power of his shed blood, we pray blessings on all of those. A special uh, prayer, God, for that soul this morning uh, that is nearest hell, that, is, that does not know you in the pardoning of their sins. We pray, God, that not only as the word goes forth this morning, live and via live stream, that someone's heart may be pricked. Somebody's mind uh, may be changed. Somebody's heart, God, would be drawn uh, to want to know you and have a personal relationship with you. Uh, God, we, uh, we just thank you for every good and perfect gift. We realize they all come from you, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples to pray this way. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Henry. He continues to do a wonderful job each and every Sunday. Um, and we uh, also um, just appreciate all that uh, continue to work and serve both in front and behind the scenes here at the ministry here at St. John's. <clears throat> I was over at the church yesterday afternoon uh, kind of getting my notes together for this morning. You know who was here, Joan Stokes. Uh, out here sweeping snow in the front. I was out trying to shovel, but uh, the ice was a little too tough. Uh, but she showed me where the salt was, so forth and so on. So uh, uh, certainly appreciate um, the uh, time, energy, and effort that she continues to put here uh, at the Ministry of St. John's, as well as uh, the rest of you that do the same. Um, other than my friend that is here, any first-time visitors here today? First-time visitors? Okay. Um, I have a special guest here today, a uh, longtime friend, um, uh, mentor, and role model, Pastor Stephen Brown. Uh, he is the pastor of Friendship uh, Baptist Church here in Evansville. They're located out on the far west north side. They're kind of on a hill, so it was a little difficult um, for them with all the ice. They uh, couldn't make it to church today. Steve texted me, wanted to know if we were having service today. I said, absolutely. So I'm glad he was able to come out and fellowship with us. Uh, my relationship with Steve uh, goes back uh, well over 55, actually, uh, close now to 60 years. 
Uh, that includes his mother, uh, the late Eugenia Brown, who was also uh, a counselor of mine at New Hope uh, back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, we had auxiliary groups there at New Hope for young people. Um, Miss Eugenia led what was known at that time as the YWAs, the Young Women's Association. Unfortunately, there was no Young Men's Association, so Sister Brown took me and several young men and allowed us uh, to come into her group. So my association with the Brown family uh, starts with Steve's mother and then with Steve, who is very active in jail and prison ministry. He was so uh, helpful and so instrumental uh, in introducing me to what we would commonly know today as door-to-door -door evangelism. Uh, how to literally knock on the door of a complete stranger, uh, introduce yourself, present the gospel of Jesus Christ, have prayer with an individual or a family. Uh, those seeds that Steve planted uh, literally decades ago uh, have continued to be a blessing uh, to me my entire life and much of which um, I still use to this day. So Steve, thanks so much uh, for being here this morning. Um, as we do each and every Sunday here at St. John's, if you have either your Bible, your electronic device, your smartphone, if you would simply put your hand on your word this morning and repeat after me, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I, am I am what it says I am. Says I am. And I can do I can what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Would you turn with me this morning in the New Testament to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Once you get there, let your fingers do the walking all the way down to verse 11. We'll be reading verses 11 through 15. When we got here this morning, Pat said, John, I don't know. I don't know if anybody's going to show up today. I said, oh, yeah, they'll be here. And, uh, and, and as I look at the crowd here, Pat, I'll tell, tell you what I'm thinking of right now. Uh, my first Sunday here at St. John's, August, summertime, no snow and ice. Um, August 2020, we had uh, 23 in attendance. We have more than that today, so I'm, I'm grateful, thankful, and appreciative to God. Ephesians chapter 4, verse starting our reading at verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man into the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Our focus scripture this morning would be verse 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and to a perfect man and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, I would like to speak for a few minutes from the subject, God calls us to unity. God calls us to unity. Growing up in the 70s, I listened to uh, a variety of different types of music. Um, one of my favorite groups back then was a group by the name of the OJs. Some of y'all will remember them. Um, they smile in your face all the time. They want to take your place, the backstabbers. Uh, the OJs uh, had a hit called Living for the Weekend. The OJs also, uh, which some people actually get this mixed up with scripture, uh, they had a song, that's right, Claudia, they get it mixed up 
uh, for the love of money. Because you know how a lot of times when you're in church and you hear a preacher, a pastor, and he's really getting into it and he's really getting emotional and the people are saying amen, you got to be careful even as the word is going forth because all the time as the word is being delivered, it is not always being delivered accurately. And so uh, you'll hear a preacher say, yeah, and... Uh, Love, uh, uh, the love of money is, is the root of all, uh, uh, money is the root of all evil. Hey Amen, Pastor. No, that's not what the Bible says. It says the love of money or your attitude of money is the root of all evil. My point here is the OJs had another hit. It was simply called unity. Unity. We've lost our unity. They went on to say divided we stand united we fall. That's one of the reasons I chose this particular topic and this particular text today because as I look around Evansville, as I look around this country, and even as I look at the world, y'all know what has happened? We've lost our unity. We've even lost it, sad but true, to a great extent even in the church. I want you to think about the subject or the topic of unity even as you go back to heaven where there was God and, and all the angels and they were at one point in unity until Lucifer uh, with a prideful and a selfish attitude decided that he didn't want to uh, any longer be part of the team of God to the point where he revolted and of course, we now know was literally kicked out of heaven. And then uh, later on planet Earth, we had Adam and Eve, and they had, if you will, at one point, fellowship with God. Again, unity, or they were unified until man, of course, decided to be greedy, selfish, and disobedient to God and broke that fellowship. I'll be talking a little more uh, later in this message about how the enemy infiltrates, if you will, because that's basically what happened uh, in the garden. But where I'd like to start this morning is uh, some of the areas uh, how we can restore or have unity uh, specifically uh, here in the church. Uh, first of all, I understand that when we practice unity, when we as the body of Christ are unified, that attracts God's favor and it attracts God's anointing. We are studying the book of Psalms on Wednesday. Psalms uh, 133 verse 1 says, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in, in unity. Uh, another version says, behold, uh, how pleasant it is for God's people to live together in unity. Unity is like the anointing oil that runs down the beard of Aaron. Oil, when you look at it in the Old Testament, is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And I believe where there is unity, there is the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And that power of God will be present and it will operate even among God's people. It also, we need to understand that God commands his blessing where there is unity. Think about this. The Holy Spirit came down on the day of Pentecost, according to Acts chapter 2, verse 1, when the believers were what? In one mind and on one accord. They were unified. If we are truly, uh, if we truly want God to not only bless us, but if we really want God to also at the same time empower us, there has to be unity in the church. I don't believe God can bless and favor division. God, if you will, this morning is not attracted to disunity when he, he himself is a God of unity. How about that, Brother John? How is that? Well, when you look at the unification even of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we find that uh, when Jesus in John chapter 17, he prayed that his people would experience unity. 
In verse 11, the King James Version, it says, Holy Father, keep these, keep through your name those whom ye have given me that they may be one as we are. God will place his favor on any church where there is unity. He will open doors of opportunity for a church that lives, operates, and walks in unity. The next thing I picked up as I thought about God calling us to unity is that unity leads to greater productivity. Um, when you look at what we commonly call in the scriptures the Great Commission, of course that's found in Matthew 28 verses 18, 19, and 20 where Jesus is addressing his disciples for the last time and he, sh he shares these words, go ye therefore. Uh, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I will be with you even to the end of the age. So that brings a question to my heart and my mind. Do we really today in 2022, do we really want to be a productive church? Do we want to do the things that not only Jesus commanded his disciples at that time, but for us as modern day disciples today? Do we want to be a productive church or do we simply want to attend on Sundays and kind of go through the traditions, kind of go through the ritualistic motions until we come back on next Sunday? Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 says this, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Uh, this is not going to surprise anyone. More can be accomplished when we work together than when we work separately. Even as I mentioned my friend and brother Steve Brown and talked about uh, evangelism and outreach and door-to-door -door ministry, watch the formula where we got that from. Jesus, when he sent out his disciples, you know how he sent them out? He sent them out two by two. And even we even got more detail with that in later years over at Memorial. When we could, we would pair a male with a female. That way, when we knocked on the door, and many times uh, we would run into a situation with, a, say, a single mom, several children, we would let the female actually have the dialogue, the discussion, the conversation with the mom, and then there I was, the guy. Uh, I would be babysitting, if you will, kind of getting the attention of the children. The whole point is we were unified and we worked together. We need to understand that that is a benefit for the church then. It's still a blessing and a benefit today. Uh, you've heard this one before, a house divided cannot stand. And I believe it's the same for the church. If a church is divided, it will not accomplish what it's supposed to accomplish. It will not be everything that God wants that church to be. And this is a warning a church that is divided will eventually implode from within. It will destroy itself. If we are to last, if we are to be sustainable, there must be unity. Oh, and if you're thinking that Jesus said he would build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it, that is correct. He did say that, but it's his church. That's his building. It's not our church. His church will have unity, not division. His church will have order, not chaos or confusion. Now that we've addressed some of the ways we can achieve unity, let us give us a few examples this morning of hindrances to unity. And first on that list is the term and the idea and the mindset of unforgiveness. Notice in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, it reminds us, and be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. The unwillingness to forgive someone who has wronged you, and we've all been wronged at one point in time or another, but when you allow un un 
it, when you allow an attitude of unforgiveness, that hinders unity. Oh, and many times those have, that have wronged you, that have wronged me, may not have realized that they've even hurt us. How about this phrase? Hurting people hurt people. A lot of times I found that to be true. The person that has a struggle in a particular area, it's because at some point they've been hurt and they actually need our prayers. They need our love. They need our compassion and they certainly need our forgiveness. Right after unforgiveness is bitterness. Unforgiveness will eventually, if you hold on to it, it will turn to bitterness and it'll return, it will turn to resentment. When we fail to forgive others, when we hold on to our hurts, when we hold on to those grudges and perhaps even that anger toward them, that attitude, that mindset, it hinders unity. Let's throw one in also that hinders unity. That's the attitude of jealousy. If you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and look at verses 1 through 4, it reads, Brothers, I was not able to speak to you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as babes in Christ. I gave you milk to drink, not solid food, because you were not ready for it. In fact, you're still not ready. Because you are still fleshly, the King James Version says, carnal, for since there is, there it is, envy and strife among you, are you not fleshly? Are you not living like unbelievers? And see, back in those days, the debate or the argument was some were saying, I was with Paul. Others were saying, I was with Apollos. Are you not unspiritual or fleshly or carnal people? Understand this morning that when we are jealous of others and when we become envious of what God does in their lives and how God uses them, it creates division rather than unity. They were full of jealousy, envy, and strife, and it divided them. When we covet other people's gifts rather than celebrate their gifts, there will always be division. But let me say this, instead of being envious of someone else's gift, discover your gift and then use your gift to the glory and the honor of God. God has a purpose for everyone in the church and understand this morning that everyone is needed in the church. When you believe in Jesus Christ, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, you now become a part of God's family. Therefore, you know what we got to do? We got to lose that me, myself, and I mentality. It's no longer just about you. But when we focus only on ourselves, there will always be a lack of unity. Paul says, don't just look upon your own interests, but look out for the interests of others as well. Consider others just as important or even more important than yourself. Think about this one this morning. If everyone took care of the needs of everyone else, everyone's needs would be met. But if we come to church thinking, what can the church do for me? No one gets help, and the unity of the church will never be developed. So we've discussed some of the hindrances to the unity. Let's take a, a positive slant on how we can keep unity in the church. And at the top of that list this morning would simply be, of course, praying for one another. I want you to think about something this morning. I know it to be a fact. When I've been angry, when I've been mad, when I've been upset with someone, you know what? I can't pray for them. I can't do it. But what I've also found out is that when I take my heart, my mind, and my focus off of me, or in this case, off my hurt, and then I ask, I request, and I pray for the Holy Spirit to help me, now I can lift up that other person and put them on my prayer list. Understand something this morning. Prayer does not just change situations and circumstances. I want you to realize something. Many of y'all already know this. It doesn't just change stuff or situations, circumstances. Prayer also and thank God that it does, it changes us. 
So if I want to restore unity in the church, then I got to learn to pray for my brothers and sisters. And then even though I'll be focusing on it more in detail next Sunday, God calls us to love. We do have to love one another. First John chapter three, verse 14. We know that we've passed from death to life because we what? We love the brethren. The world will know that we belong to Jesus Christ when we love one another. True love for one another will lead to real unity. And it takes the Holy Spirit, let me repeat that. It takes the Holy Spirit to produce real love. Love is the work of the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, it's the first fruit of the fruit of the Spirit that is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, and the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, etc. Love should flow from our lives naturally as believers, and if we find that we aren't loving, then maybe we need to check ourselves. Maybe we need to re-examine re ourselves. Back in the old days, they would say, maybe you need to go back to the altar. Maybe you need to find out, did you truly make that commitment to Jesus Christ or did you just simply join the church? Because when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, the Holy Spirit, the greatest power in the universe now abides inside of you and then as you nurture and as you grow in uh, grace, knowledge, and stature, one of the natural uh, experiences or expressions of that is not only going to be love for God, but it's going to be love for other people. We may not always love perfectly, but man, if we're more hateful than loving, then absolutely positively there is a problem in our heart. Another way that we can restore unity is learning how to let go of the past. That same apostle Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the, high, uh, the mark of the high calling in Jesus Christ. This for many people, even in the church, is one of the most hardest things for them to do, but it will go a long way in helping the church to build unity. Too many people can't move on because they are stuck in the past. Whether it's reliving good times of the past or sadly many times it's reopening the wounds of the past. The past has a lot of people and a lot of churches stuck where they are. But here's the reminder, here's the revelation, the past is over. We can't change it, we can't relive it, but we can learn from it, but we can't let it hold us hostage. We can't let it divide us. We have to let go of the past so we can move forward. If we want to continue to restore unity in the church, we got to learn to bear each other's burdens. The church, think about it this morning, should be a place, it's not always, it not always is, but it should be a place where we lift up one another and help each other through life. We are to rejoice according to the scriptures with those that rejoice, and we are to weep with those that weep. Understand something this morning, we are not in this Christian life by ourselves. We are not in this Christian walk alone. No one here today should feel like that they have to face what they are going through by themselves. The family of God should be a support system for one another. We should encourage one another and we should be able to share what is going on in our lives without fear of judgment. Our brothers and sisters in Christ should be able to count on us. Think about as I look around this room today and I see a variety of people that I have built a friendship and a relationship with over the past 18, 19, 20 months. Um, these are people that have shown that love, have shown that caring, have shown that compassion. And Pat and I have done our best to do the same thing. Many of y'all heard a brief testimony. He's over at New Hope today, of course, supporting his new pastor. Brother Oscar McGee, if you listened to him last Sunday, he said, what a nice church, what a caring church, what a compassionate church, what a loving church that St. John's was toward him and his wife when they didn't have a church that they could go to. That is the type of attitude that we continue to need to exhibit, but it shouldn't just stop when we come to the sanctuary. 
Our attitude of forgiveness, of compassion, of caring and love has to also be expressed outside of these four walls. How do y'all think that the unchurched or the unsaved people will ever be able to come into right relationship unless someone that knows God, somebody that has a relationship with Jesus Christ, is not only willing to speak to them, be friendly toward them, but even take that next step and share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. Uh, I'll close it out like this. Several centuries ago, Ancient China wanted to secure its borders from its northern invaders. So they built what we now know as the Great Wall of China to protect that border. The massive wall stretched 1,500 miles, 12 to 40 feet wide, 20 to 50 feet high. The wall was way too high for any enemy to scale, too thick to tear down, and too long to go around. They also, in addition to all of that, posted soldiers at strategic places around the wall. It was built wide enough on the top for chariots to patrol the walls. If they heard of an attack at a distant location, they could quickly get to it. They were up high, giving them a superior advantage over their enemies. They knew that they had protected their borders sufficiently against any and all of their enemies. But in the first 100 years of the Great Wall of China, the nation was invaded not once, not twice, but three times. Wonder how that happened, Brother John. An enemy bribed the gatekeepers and entered into the land undetected. When we diminish the importance of unity in the body of Christ, we risk being invaded by the enemy. I shared with this congregation a few Sundays ago that the enemy, according to the scriptures and according specifically to the Apostle Paul, is not a white man or a black man. It's not a Republican or a Democrat. It's not your neighbor. It's not your uh, mean co-worker. That's not who your enemy is. According to the word of God, our enemies are not flesh and blood, but it's principalities and powers. It's spiritual wickedness in high places. We need to be aware in the church, and not just St. John's. I'm talking about any and every church. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Our enemy is Satan. Our enemy is the devil. And one of the ways you can recognize the enemy, we call it uh, having spiritual discernment, is to have what I like to call your spiritual antenna up. So you are aware when he tries to be slick, when he tries to be shrewd, when he tries to be smooth, because how many thousands of years is that particular situation? Y'all know it goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden when the enemy approached Eve and questioned the word of God. One of the reasons I believe not only in preaching the word of God, but I believe sincerely the importance of studying the word of God is because, I'm talking about Paul again, that's how we put our armor on. That's how we are prepared for spiritual warfare. I'm believing for unity today. I'm looking for things to get better. I'm looking, I'm praying for things to improve. As a matter of fact, Gwen's not here today, but she knows my, uh, she knows my position, she knows my phrase. I'm not just optimistic, I'm prayerfully optimistic that things will get better. But I'm not prayerfully optimistic and sitting on a couch with my feet propped up. I'm actually a part of the army of Jesus Christ. Y'all heard me share a few Sundays ago that I'm a soldier in the army of God. And a soldier rolls his or her sleeves up. A soldier gets properly dressed and a soldier goes out there and goes to war, but not a battle of being mean and hateful and rude and discourteous, but actually the battle of love that Jesus Christ expressed for each and every one of us over 2,000 years ago when he died on the cross. It's going to take the effort of all of us. We can't do it by ourselves. So today it's my prayer and it's my desire that God will make us one. It is my prayer that any issues that we may have with one another would be dealt with, that they would be addressed, that they would be laid aside, that we might go forward and do all that God has called us to do. 
So if you didn't know by now, now you know what we need and why God has called us to unity. Can we thank God for the word of God this morning? Maybe you're interested in being a part of this fellowship, uh, being a part of this army, being a part of this church, being a part of the body of Christ. I've got good news for you the first Sunday in February 2022. The doors of salvation are wide open. Jesus Christ has his arms extended toward any and everyone. As a matter of fact, the scripture says, whosoever will, let him or let her come. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, this is your opportunity to simply tell God that you're a sinner, that you realize that you've done wrong, that you would ask him to forgive you of your sins, come into your heart and ask him to save you. And then we say it like this, God, the best that I know how, I'm receiving your son, Jesus Christ, as my savior right now. God is not so concerned in the specifics or the details of the word as he is with the sincerity and the genuineness of your heart. Um, it's been now over 60 years since I accepted, G pardon me, over 55 years since I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And I'll be very honest, I didn't know a whole lot about the Bible as an 11 year old. But thank God because of my parents and people like Reverend Brown and a lot of those deacons and mothers over at New Hope back in the day, Sunday school classes, vacation Bible school, BTU. Man, I kept hearing that stuff over and over, but as I admitted to some of y'all, some of y'all laughed at me, but it's true. As an 11 year old, when my mama, Lou Helen Herring, told me if you don't get right with God, you will die, you'll go to hell, and you will burn for it, that did it for me. Uh, I knew, I didn't know all that other stuff, but I knew I didn't want that. And then thanks be to God that I stayed around the church and I kept going to Sunday school and Bible study and fellowshipping and I did grow in grace, knowledge, and stature and in my relationship with God and now I realize that God wants the best for us if we are willing to commit our lives to him. If you prayed that prayer this morning, congratulations and welcome to the family of God. Now, my next suggestion and strong recommendation is that you find you a church home where you can hear good preaching and good teaching and where you can fellowship with like-minded believers. We would be glad to have you as a part of the fellowship here at St. John's, but if St. John's is not your choice, there are plenty of other churches all over the city of Evansville, Newburgh, Henderson, where you can plug in and grow in your walk with the Lord. For those of you that may be joining us uh, via live stream, go to our St. John's East Facebook page. You can go to my personal Facebook page, type in your name, type in your number, and either myself or a member here will get back with you, answer any questions you may have, walk you through the process, and let you know how you can be uh, a part of the family of God. We want to pause now and uh, honor God with our, uh, with our gifts. We realize every good and perfect gift comes from him. We realize also that God never asked us to bring him or give him anything until he has first given it to us. So may we bow in a word of prayer. God, we thank you for the word of God this morning. We thank you, God, for the concept of unity, that you want uh, not only the people of God, the body of Christ, God, you want the world to be more loving, more caring, more compassionate, more forgiving, more unified. At this particular point of the service, God, we want to thank you and recognize you for blessing us. And not just financially, God, thank you for blessing us with health and strength. Thank you for blessing us with family and friends and loved ones. Thank you, God, for blessing us even when other churches had to be closed today, our doors could be open and we could come and fellowship with like-minded believers. We bring these gifts to the altar. We give back to you, God, what you have already given to us. We ask now that you bless, sanctify, multiply these gifts 
May they go for the ongoing as well as the upbuilding of thy kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. We'd like to pause just for a moment, and this is certainly an exciting time for us, uh, to recognize some of our new members that have recently joined. Let's see if I can, here we go. We actually had four that we wanted to recognize today. I think I mentioned uh, Mary Jane is a little under the weather, so her husband Richard is at home playing doctor. Uh, on her today, so hopefully they will be back with us next week. Um, I know this young lady, she told me on the phone last week, uh, she's a little shy. Uh, she doesn't want to come up to the front. So Aquanetta Cheney, would you stand please? I, I'm presenting to Aquanetta today a certificate of membership and it reads thusly, Aquanetta Cheney, having manifested credible evidence that she has entered into covenant with the St. John's East United Church of Christ, is uh, now hereby awarded this certificate, commending her to further joys of, of, of the Christian life and church membership. It's signed by myself as lay minister, February 6, 2022. Would y'all welcome Aquanetta to the St. John's Church family? Congratulations, sis. We have one other that is present with us today. If I could have uh, Maureen Thomas to stand, please. And of course, it reads the same way that we are welcoming Maureen uh, to the St. John's Church family. Um, Maureen, uh, our, she's longtime friends uh, with Pat and I. We go back old school at New Hope. Uh, she's quick to remind Pat uh, at Wednesday Bible study that she was her Sunday school teacher. Uh, but we're just excited to have her uh, also to unite with our church family. She is a consistent member of our 12 noon Bible study uh, at Wednesday. So would you uh, join me in a round of applause welcoming Sister Marine Thomas. <laughs> Bless you, sister. Um, I did receive word just this morning, but I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag. Uh, another young lady came up to me and said, John, I'm ready to uh, receive my paperwork. I would like to join as well. So uh, we, we, instead of waiting until the next first Sunday, we're gonna recognize uh, new members again next week. So prayerfully, Richard and Mary Jane will be back and then we will have another new member that will become a part of our fellowship. So we just wanna thank God uh, for the growth here uh, at St. John's East. If you, if you would look at your uh, bulletin as we uh, get prepared for our uh, communion service, every first Sunday here at St. John's, uh, we uh, uh, go through uh, one of the ordinances um, of the church, uh, those being baptism and Lord's Supper. Uh, is there anyone in the sanctuary that has not received uh, their communion cup as yet? Would you raise your hand and Joan will be uh, more than happy to serve you. Thank you, Joan. Everyone been served? What we'd like to do is read the unison prayer of confession together. It reads, loving and merciful God, you know our hearts and you know our lives. We confess to you that which causes separation, that which causes pain, that which causes distress, and that which breaks down. We confess to you our part in those things, and in humility and hope, we ask for your help to do better, to reconcile, to heal, to soothe, to build up. So may we love you and our neighbor and follow our Christ in whose name we pray, amen. We'll give you just a moment. I know sometimes it's a little difficult with the cups. 
um, to peel off that first top cover, which will allow you to uh, have the bread. And then there is a second peeling there, which uh, allows us to partake of the wine. I'm gonna give everybody just a moment to get that. While you are doing so, I ask you to think back over 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ sat um, at, if you will, a communion table with his disciples. And what we're doing this morning, of course, is symbolic uh, of what happened uh, over 2,000 years ago. The bread, of course, recognizing the broken body of Jesus Christ, the wine, of course, recognizing the shed blood of Christ. Always remember what the scripture says. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I don't know about you, but I'm, uh, I'm grateful. Uh, I'm ecstatic. I'm excited about the fact that a God who loved not only me, but loved you also, even in spite of us, and he loved us enough to sacrifice his life. My favorite scripture, if many of you are aware, is John 3.16. God so loved not just me, not just you. He so loved the entire world that he gave or sacrificed his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. We used to say it uh, back in some of our Easter plays back in the day. Uh, God sacrificed his or gave his son. His son turned around and gave his life. So this morning in symbolic love and certainly in uh, uh, symbolic appreciation, we take this bread, may we partake, and then the wine. And we certainly thank God for all of his blessings and for all of his benefits. God, we thank you today for another opportunity to not only, not only worship and praise you, but to fellowship with other brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you, God, for reminding us that if the church is to move forward in a way that would be pleasing to you, we need to set aside those things that divide us and focus on those things that unify us. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will continue to lead, guide, direct each and every one of us as we look to do those things that would be pleasing in thy sight. God, we, we thank you, we praise you, and we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In our last selection for the morning, and then I'll give the benediction.
as we uh, prepare to leave, I uh, also want to thank um, my friend, brother, and uh, chess partner, Dan Kuhn, for uh, bringing such beautiful music uh, between 10 and 10.25 a.m. in ha House Hall. Uh, did a wonderful job again this morning. Thank you, Dan, for your uh, contribution here at the church. Um, as we prepare for the benediction, repeat after me. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Amen. Everybody have a blessed week. Thank you.